What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with some Kerbal Space Program. Now the last couple years have taught me that one thing we're going to need is an ejection seat to take us to the moon because, you know, if we want to get off this planet quick, it's just going to have to happen. And so I figured we'd use Kerbal Space Program as the perfect platform to prototype this ejection seat. I've done some research and I believe to get to the moon we need about 5,000 meters per second of delta V, maybe 5,500. So the first thing we're going to do is just lay out our ejection seat and it's going to be really really small so we've got a tiny little fuel tank here and then of course to make this thing work we're gonna need some sort of a reaction wheel which will let us steer the entire craft and then we're gonna need the most basic tiny engine and right away look at that that gets us 1700 meters per second now we also need to make sure we have enough delta v to land on the moon so i believe it's like 5,000 just to get there so we're probably gonna need like more like six to actually land and survive um but we'll put a seat on top here no problem somewhere in the middle just like that perfect and then we'll shimmy this back. There we go. So our Kerbal can sit right on top of that. And then to power the reaction wheel, we're going to need a little bit of power. And of course, some solar panels. So we'll just do this. Put some batteries here. We're going to just, uh, we're going to do a lot of this. Where we just glitch it right inside. Perfect. Can't even tell. Awesome. Gotta love that. And then, of course, we'll put two panels. One on either side. That way, no matter which direction we're facing we should get some sunlight. Now, this obviously isn't enough to get there. We're going to need one little stage. And I think to do that, we're going to use this engine. And the reason why is it's a dual engine. So it has both atmospheric and non-atmospheric thrust. So when we're in the atmosphere, we can save a lot of fuel by just having some air intakes on this thing. So we're going to put a fuel tank. Uh, actually, we need a decoupler first. So let's put a small decoupler. There we go. And then we'll just put like one single fuel tank, like this size maybe. Okay, this gets us 7,974 delta V. But that's, a, that's kind of a fake number because I don't think it's accounting for atmosphere versus non-atmospheric thrust. Now, we're going to need a little bit of extra liquid fuel. This has liquid fuel and oxidizer, but it won't use the oxidizer if we're in atmosphere mode. Put a couple of these on the sides perfect that'll give us some extra liquid fuel we'll just kind of jam that in there don't worry about it it's gone it's out of sight and then we need some air intakes um in order to make this work so i don't know how far we're actually going to get with this um let's just rotate this perfect uh let's rotate it that way just so when we launch it goes out nine thousand it says we have ten thousand nine hundred forty one meters per second I, I don't know if that's actually accurate or not but let's throw a kerbal in there jeb you're good now let's let's see if we can make it to the moon it's not bad for an ejection seat it's a little big it might not fit in your car um but i think it'll work so here we go let's let's okay it's in atmosphere mode it just needs to it just needs to ramp up the thrust there we go oh oh no is it okay the thrust oh hold on a minute oh boy it might be it might be too heavy we might need an initial kick to get it going um this works though which is good that's great. Yeah, no, you're having you're having a great time. There's no parachutes, bud. So theoretically, if we launch all these at the same time, uh, as this big engine, this will give us enough speed to get going. And then, you know, the air intakes will have some velocity, we'll generate enough thrust. Hopefully this works. Otherwise, we could add more air intakes as well. Uh, but I think I think this is what we want to do. Here we go. Boost. Yeah, that's initial speed. Alright, that gets us going. And the thrust is gen we are going up. That's amazing. It's enough thrust. Perfect. That's all we need. So now we just have to somehow hit the moon. Well, let's see if we actually have enough to get to orbit of the moon, first of all. Let's just tilt a little bit. Not too much. There we go. Tilt a little bit more. Now, as soon as we leave atmosphere, this engine's going to have to switch over to the oxidizer mode. And then we'll burn the oxygen. Right now, you can see we're only pulling the liquid fuel. And I can't select the tanks inside there that we glitched in. Um, but those would also be going down in liquid fuel as well. We definitely have more than enough liquid fuel, but the oxidizer is going to burn as soon as we get into space, and that's going to be it. Now, I'm hoping we can just hit the moon in one straight shot. It's right there. This is amazing. Yeah, gotta love the fact that he's just, just doing a calm, you know, 0.8 Mach speed sitting in a spacesuit on top of a rocket. It's fine. No big deal. We're still going up. The Delta V, I don't, I don't trust that because this is, so, the Delta V calculation falls apart when you add two stages, like an atmosphere and a non-atmosphere portion of it. When it's just 
rockets in space with liquid fuel and oxidizer. The delta V is really, really accurate. But see, it's like it's changing right now. You can see it's going up. So we're burning fuel, but we're oh now it's going down again. Yeah, it's I don't know how the delta V calculation works when it's atmosphere based engines. We are picking up speed though. This is good. These engines we're still at sixteen thousand meters. We still got effective airspeed coming in with these adjustable intakes. That's perfect. You're still breathing air, which is great. You're at eighty nine percent throughout. Now it's starting to lose air. You can see we just we just broke through that atmosphere layer. We're into the upper, upper, upper atmosphere. And then once we get to this black point here, it's there's no atmosphere, but it'll switch over. So the key is, can we get enough air to tilt sideways here and maintain a ton of thrust in the atmosphere? We're speeding up, trying to shallow. Now our gimbal is completely messed up because our seat is flat. Our seat needs to be in the direction of the rocket for the gimbal to make sense. So, it looks like we're aiming straight up in the sky, but we're not. This is actually like the horizon line. Yeah, look at, look at those edges. They're like dying. But yeah, the gimbal's messed up because the seat is this way. The game kind of wants you... Are we going back... We're going back down. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're still going up. I might need to, might need to give it a little bit more tilt here. We are losing speed. Uh, let's just switch mode. There we go. Now we're, now we're cruising. But now look at how fast we're burning fuel. Oh, no. Might need more liquid fuel as well. Oh god. Oh, we are going down. I tilted too much. Oh no, we're wasting so much fuel burning up an atmosphere. Oh no, our Kerbal's gonna die. Bro! Bro, don't overheat! Ah, uh, there he goes. And now we have no rocket control. Yeah, no, that's that's not that's not good. That's that's really bad. Oh no. Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah, we're out of we're out of fuel. Okay, I think we have to go a, l a little bit straighter. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe maybe I'll add some more liquid fuel tanks. All right, so let's just do this real quick. If we have enough to actually lift off, that'll be great. But let's do this. Add a bunch of these baguette tanks. Okay, so we got extra baguette tanks up in there. As long as we have enough speed initially to get this thing going, I think we'll be good. But that'll give us extra time in space flight. I wanted to pick up more speed in the atmosphere, but then we're just going to burn up. So that's not good. Here we go. Okay, we still lift off, which is good. We are now losing speed, though. But it should... There we go. Perfect. It passes the threshold. Air-breathing engines have to just ramp up. It's crazy. Uh-oh. Oh, no. We're... We're... We're tilting. We're tilting. It is top-heavy. Yeah, let's just go straight up. All right, we're gonna go straight up until we're, you know, up into this upper blue atmosphere, the second layer. This might actually be too heavy. We are losing thrust and losing speed simultaneously. We might need to double up the kick. All right, I think this is gonna work. This will give us enough initial initial kick. Um, it's it's a lot. It's you know it'll be fine, and then we'll throw this guy in there. Yeah, what, what, it's saying it's only going to be 117 meters per second of initial kick. I, I feel like that's nonsense, but there we go. That'll give us the initial launch, and then hopefully that's enough for the air breathing engine to take over. All right, here we go. Yeah, we're going. We are, yeah, no, it, it is not 100. We are, holy cow, we're going the speed of sound. Okay, we are faster. That thing was actually pushing us still. Okay, now what's our thrust at? 103, 104, it's going up. 105. We're now... Man, that is not good. We are still losing thrust. This thing is just crazy heavy with those extra fuel tanks. But we're still moving, so let's see what happens here. I don't know, I think this thrust is not going to be enough. We might have to just remove those extra liquid fuel tanks. There we go, it switches over. Now we're burning that liquid fuel. I don't think this is going to be enough. I think we're going to need a lot more liquid fuel to get to the moon. We are burning up on the way out. That's always a good sign. Probably ramp down the engines a little bit then, to be honest. Ah, screw it. This is like air resistance 101. This is just, this is just losing thrust for no reason. See, we're slowing down. 
We need to clear the atmosphere first. That does not make us far enough. Okay. We need to rethink this design a little bit. All right, so I think I found the solution to the ejection seat. I've added some round fuel tanks around the outside, which brings us up to like 2391, 2400 meters per second, which is a lot better. You can see before it was only 1100. So that'll give us more fuel in this final stage. And then I've also added an entire aerodynamic structure uh, just because the Kerbal kept overheating when we were flying through the atmosphere. But if we have this and we add some wings, uh, it kind of can fly like a plane through the atmosphere, the upper atmosphere, get up to like a thousand meters per second before we switch over to the space engines. Uh, so hopefully this works. I think we'll be able to get to the moon on this one. Jeb's still the pilot. He is perfect. So hopefully we can just launch this thing and go. Hopefully with these uh, changes, it'll be good. We'll see. We got extra fuel. We got the aerodynamics. It's uh, more like a plane than an ejection seat, but... This entire plane section, though, is really just to get us to space. Once we're in space, uh, it's pretty much just going to be flying on a seat and nothing else. But here we go. I think we just got to go at like a 45 degree angle. We'll spend a little bit of time in atmosphere picking up some speed. And then transition into the space engines. And as long as this rocket ship can get us into like a relative orbit, the seat itself will have enough fuel, I think, to do the rest. So that's really where it's at. We just gotta make sure we don't go too shallow so we spend too much time in atmosphere and get too much drag. That's sort of the balancing point. Alright. Just slowly tilt it back. Go up at a 45 degree angle. Perfect. It, it looks kind of like a, a, an intercontinental ballistic missile. I'm not gonna lie. It's... It, it started to look like an ejection seat, and now it's we're basically an intercontinental ballistic missile stage. But if this thing makes it to the moon, this is actually the smallest craft I've ever sent to the moon in this game, for sure. Uh, normally, I sense like big multi-stage rockets, stuff like that. This is this is very small, which is kind of cool. We are at the edge of the atmosphere though, so our wings really aren't doing much at this point. But we're gonna pick up a lot of speed. Probably just skim through the atmosphere for a while, superheat the thing, and then fling ourselves out. Yeah, now, okay. This might work. We're just gonna go down a little bit and pick up a whole ton of speed. And hopefully not overheat. And then we're gonna tilt up and fly right out. Oh yeah, this is like re-entry 101. Here we go. Let's tilt up. Oh god. And then we're gonna skim off the atmosphere and just go right into space. That's ridiculous. This is why we needed the aerodynamic nose cone. Jeb here, he doesn't have that much heat resistance, unfortunately. Pretty much dies instantly when that happens. But here we go. Now we're doing 1260. And we're gonna go up. And blast right on out of the atmosphere. It's gonna be perfect. This is the most ridiculous space flight ever. Keep going up and up and up and up. It should auto switch, but I don't know what the threshold is for the auto switch. I wonder if it like has to get to zero thrust, because we're still gonna have a tiny amount while we're stuck in the atmosphere. I think we just switch it now. Oh no, there it goes. Okay, it's got its own cutoff. Perfect. Now we just gotta get enough into orbit so the ejection seat can take over. If we can get up to like 2400 meters per second, this won't put us straight into orbit, but as long as it's enough to, you know, get us out like two, three hundred thousand meters away from the planet. There we go, we're at 1900 meters per second on orbit. We gotta break through this atmosphere, this is insane. We're literally cooking right now, wasting so much energy just to uh, cut through the air. All right, there we go. We're into space. Everything is quiet. All right, let's deploy. That was fast. Don't don't overheat, Jeb. Bro, bro, chill out. <laughs> he just literally, like, cooked. I mean, we're still kind of in the atmosphere. 70,000, I think, is where it finally ends. So we are losing a little bit of speed here, but it uh, shouldn't be too bad. We have 2,800. There we go. Let's leave that behind. All right. And then once we get to the Apoapsis, we will make a burn to get to the moon.
the maneuver is going to go down even though we're not really on that maneuver. Yeah, unfortunately, because we have a seat that's 90 degrees to every vector we want to go to, that's this is the reality of it. But I think we're good. This should slowly expand and get us towards the moon. I don't know if we're going to have enough thrust to land. Uh, it's going to be a tight one if we've got enough to, to land it on the moon, but that's a wicked rocket. I can't believe that plane actually worked. I think we spent a little too much time in atmosphere. I think if we had the perfect flight trajectory, we wouldn't burn so much in the atmosphere. We're getting close here, so I'm just going to get rid of the maneuver. Do this slowly. So we can just perfectly hit the moon. There we go. Done. This is insane. This is the smallest spacecraft I've ever sent to the moon. I mean, the, the launch capsule was a little bit bigger, but this is tiny. And we're just... <laughs> Jeb's just going to eat some snacks out of his backpack on the... on the. How long is it going to take you to get there? Five hours? Okay, never mind. You know what? You'd be okay. It's only five hours to get to the moon. All right, so we're here. Now what I want to do is at the periapsis, I want to slow down and try and get this to arc in and land on the far side of the moon. We shouldn't be going too fast, only 340 on the periapsis. So we could go 340 to slow us down and hopefully we can arc into the far side of the moon there. Let's just really, there we go, really crank it up. And then we've got 1600 to land. This should be perfect. Done. We're gonna hit the moon. Wonderful. We don't have landing gear, but you'll be okay, Jeb. You'll be okay. Amazing. Alright, uh, here we go. We're gonna go slow, slow, yeah, okay, there. Alright, we're at 37,000. Um, oh shoot, how do I... I think I gotta aim, like, I'm literally just gonna have to visually do this. The, the speed vectors are all wrong. It tells me, like, this is the direction I need to go to go opposite of my velocity, but that's clearly wrong because it's 90 degrees off. But that's at like 35, so we need to be something like here. Like 35 on this side. Something like that. All right, we're 27,000 meters up, 25,000. Let's start slowing down. We obviously don't want to do that too early because we're still going to accelerate more as we go. But we are also doing this completely visually, so... Just gonna bring it down slowly. Don't have landing gear. Uh, it seemed at the time I thought that was gonna be just too much weight for no reason. Hopefully I'm right. I think we'll be able to just land on this thruster if we do it nicely. And I mean, we're not really looking to get off the moon again. We're just looking to get here, right? It's an ejection seat from Earth. That's all we care about. We got off Earth and we're gonna land here in one smooth motion. That was the whole point. We're going to free fall a little bit, increase some time warp, pick up some speed. You're starting to see the surface of the moon. Let's really crank it up. 8,000 meters. Only 950 left of fuel. I think we'll be okay. I don't, I don't think, um, I think I'm off a little bit on the vector. I think I gotta go like this. Is literally a visual landing. I should have put an AI controller that was vertical. It would have been easier on the gimbal, but you know what? It's, uh, who cares? Yeah, this gimbal is so messed up. Oh, no. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, this way. This way. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, perfect. 20 meters per second. He's having a good time. Okay, we're, uh, we're drifting this way. Oh god. <laughs> alright, alright, we gotta be super careful on the landing. If it tips over, I think we're gonna kill Jeb. And like, it's just, it's so close. It's so close. Cannot quick save when about to crash. Perfect. No, that's what I like to hear. I'm not about to crash, we're about to land. Have some confidence game. Alright, we just gotta cut all the sideways velocity here. All right, chill, chill, going too far forward. Oh my god, it's like the smallest amount of thrust is still too much thrust. I could, actually, I could just reduce it here. I could put a thrust limiter here. There we go. Okay, we're so close. We just can't, can't. 
there we go. Finish, finish, finish. Finish, finish. Okay, we're good? We good? Oh, <gasps> we made it. Let's go. Let's go. Perfect. All right, get out of your seat. Get out. Get out of your seat, Jeb. Leave the seat. Let's go. Oh, it's amazing. We made it to the surface of the moon on that little ejection seat. That's so awesome. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna plant our flag here. Site name: Ejection Seat Landing One. Black text. We landed the ejection seat. Not sure how we're getting home yet. Well, that's awesome. I can't believe we actually did it. Look at that. Where is Earth anyway? I don't. I don't. Okay, hold on a minute. Let's just. We can do some time warp. Time warp. Oh God. Good thing there's no food. Otherwise, Jeb would really have a problem. I still don't see the Earth. Are we on one of those weird axes where the Earth is actually in the opposite direction? Or is it right above us, maybe? I don't... I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's a rock. That's a rock. Well, I guess you could say the Earth is a big rock, too. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you want to see more Kerbal, let me know in the comments down below. I actually really like Kerbal Space Program. There's a lot of stuff that's been added to the game. Um, but I've not really played it much on the channel ever. And it would be kind of cool to... You know, play some of it, maybe do some career mode, check out some of the new features, and of course, explore planets, or just do ridiculous little projects like this that have no reason at all. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.